you know, on a high level, comparatively, what's happening in this sort of shopping center marketing effort is the shopping centers want the content. But to this point, if the retailers don't give them the content, it's the retailer's lost opportunity. But again, also the shopping centers, because they want to promote and drive that traffic and sales so that everybody ultimately wins at the end of the day. You're listening to Retail Remix, your inside access to candid conversations with the people shaping retail's future. Here's your host, Alicia Esposito. A lot of our readers already have a presence in shopping malls or are planning to make their way into shopping malls. That's why we've been covering a lot more in this space and most of all, what some of the keys are to success. Marketing is a big part of the equation. But one thing that a lot of brands don't know is that there are already funds baked into these contracts to implement marketing and advertising related to your presence in that shopping mall. Honestly, it's something that I didn't know, and it feels very nuanced and complex, which is why I was really excited to sit down with Sean Snyder, founder and president of Engagement Agents, because his company tackles this issue head on. Listen in with me because we start to peel back some of these nuances, some of these realities that a lot of brands are facing and how they can best optimize their investments to drive traffic to their stores in shopping malls. Listen in because I learned a lot and hopefully you will too. Sean, thanks so much for being on the show. It's great to meet you. Great to have you. Same, Alicia. Thanks for having me. We have a lot to dig into because one area that has always been fascinating for me is not just the state of malls and how they're evolving, how they're changing, but also how the dynamics between the mall developers and brands and retailers are changing, right? Like, so how are the two entities collaborating? What are the tension points? And how can they better work together to improve the customer experience. So you play in a very interesting space, which we'll get to in a second, but what are you seeing? How are you seeing brands and retailers think about the work they need to do with mall developers today? So I think a lot of retailers and conversely, the mall developers and the shopping centers want to collaborate. I think the challenge has been the shopping centers have a lot of great opportunities for the retailers, but the challenge has been for retailers that it is a very complex process because for the most part, every landlord and shopping center operates in its own little ecosystem. So to this point, if I'm a retailer that has five stores, 50 stores, 500 stores, in the normal course of business, historically, I'm gonna have to do the same amount of work five times, 50 times, 500 times, And then you start opening up Pandora's box in terms of consistency and the cadence Mm -hmm. because you've got then 500 people at the shopping centers doing the same amount of work 500 times and there's potentially room for error and challenges doing the work very manually, the old fashioned way as I call it. Right, right. So then what are the risks and impacts there from a customer experience standpoint, or I guess more specifically a marketing standpoint, because obviously the goal is to get foot traffic, is to get people in the door. And I'm sure, and you can say I'm wrong, different shopping centers, different shopping malls have probably different marketing services or offerings. So can you kind of break that down? Because obviously marketing is a big group for us. So I'm sure they'd love to dig into that. Great question. So you're exactly bang on. Most shopping centers have a suite of let's call it standard opportunities. So most of them will have social media, email campaigns, because they're trying to encourage the mall consumer, shopping center consumer to sign up for knowing about events or what's going on, new collaborations, collections, because the shopping centers want to obviously drive traffic and sales to the shopping center and then for to its tenants. Mm -hmm. But there are what I'll call sort of custom opportunities that may vary property by property. So some shopping centers may have digital signs, others don't. Others may have different initiatives because of they might be more of a tourist destination. So mm. they'll promote and market more tourist type initiatives. Okay. But again, going back to the real part of the problem is for a retailer, it's very hard to keep track of all this, again, manually, right. the old fashioned way. And you can't really do it in an Excel file because 
I think I shared with you earlier, I'm a former retailer, so I've been on that side of the fence and it wasn't pretty because it's just too complex to handle. Right. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for the retailers that are unfortunately getting missed. Like they have good intentions, but they can't handle it. Right. But it also then becomes a snowball effect because ultimately the ripple effect is felt then on the shopping center because if you give consumers less reasons to go shopping in the shopping center, obviously that's going to in turn impact the sales and traffic at its retailers. So it's this snowball effect that ultimately right. happens. Okay. So definitely clear fragmentation and complexity in terms of managing the marketing opportunities, marketing knowing and taking advantage of that. But there's also fragmentation or maybe it's even confusion between like who handles what. Is that fair to say? Because it's like there's the marketing team at HQ, but then it's like the people who are more boots on the ground. Like how do those dynamics work? Yeah. So again, great question. So it varies retailer by retailer, but I would say in most cases, it's ultimately the marketing teams of the retailers that need to execute on this. Yeah. But again, in the old fashioned way of doing it, it's how do you do this at scale across X number of properties without going crazy? Because you only have so much time in a day to do everything that you're got to do in there for, and then, then some. But also the other challenges in terms of there is a bit of a hot potato, if you will. So some mm-hmm. retailers might say, well, it's a local store initiative, so we'll leave it up to the store managers. Mm-hmm. But then to this point, if you're the head of stores, objectively speaking, you don't want 50 store managers doing the same thing 50 times every week because it's going to open up a whole can of worms. Right. And you want those store managers servicing more customers and spending more time on the store floor selling than worrying about is the shopping center promoting our marketing campaigns. But also to touch on that, I think the other big problem is these opportunities that we're talking about with the shopping centers ultimately are paid for by the real estate teams. Okay. And generally speaking, real estate teams and the marketing teams, at least we've found, don't really communicate. Mm-hmm. Like they obviously communicate about a new store that's opening, et cetera, but marketing teams generally aren't necessarily aware of these opportunities that the company's paying for. And again, yeah. hence sort of the challenge and opportunity that's out there to help drive more traffic and sales to the property and to its tenants. So that kind of creates a ripple effect, I feel like, because we know just in our coverage, marketing is feeling the heat. Right. They're feeling more pressure to create more content, more localized content, more impactful content, more targeted campaigns across all channels to optimize reach and impact. But then at the same time, their finance team is like, well, what's the ROI on this? Right. Like you're investing in X. What are the outcomes? Like what's the ROI? So it seems like it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. Because they're not taking advantage of the opportunities that they don't really know that they're paying for. Is that kind of how it all comes together? Yeah, yeah, that's a great response to it. So, I mean, it's literally money being left on the table that the retailers are paying for. So I think you and I talked about this earlier, is a lot of the retailers liken it to being the world's most expensive gym membership. Right. (laughs) Uh, And it's like that, right? So if you're going, you got a gym membership, you don't use it, you can't really go back to the gym and say, hey, can I have some money back? They're going to say, well, hey, Alicia, you you, you snooze, you lose. And that's really, you know, on a high level, comparatively, what's happening in this sort of shopping center marketing effort is the shopping centers want the content. But to this point, if the retailers don't give them the content, it's the retailers lost opportunity. But again, also the shopping centers, because they want to promote and drive that traffic and sales so that everybody ultimately wins at the end of the day. Right. And obviously, this is a lot of build up to the fascinating space that engagement agents plays in. So how are you helping close those gaps? How are you helping, I guess, create better alignment and helping them fully understand and and capitalize on the opportunities that are available? Because as I can see, and and I'm sure everybody listening can see, there are a lot of layers here. There are a lot of things at play at once. Yeah. So, I mean, as I mentioned, I'm a former retailer myself, so I've been on that side of the fence. And I went through this problem firsthand with an 85 store retail chain wow. where we didn't want our store managers doing it. They were doing it, but again, there was no control. There was no consistency, as you mentioned, no cadence. It was all ad hoc. So then you okay. get into the, which you touched on earlier, the poor customer experience. Cause the last thing you want is a customer coming in saying, Hey, I saw this offer, but it ended a week ago, but the store manager put up the wrong end date. So now they've got mm. to honor it. So that's the last thing any retailer wants to have. Or they happen. didn't switch out the signage in time. You got yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. So there's a whole cadence challenge there. Yeah. But also in terms of just going to what then we do is I recognize this was a problem that I ran into and recognize that retailers 
haven't solved this challenge. So uh, six years ago, took the initiative to build out a solution for this 85 store chain, knowing that if it would work for them, it would work for anybody. So more specifically, what we do at engagement agents is we've built a software platform that makes it super easy for the retailers to execute their marketing campaigns out to the shopping centers, digital physical marketing channels that they're paying for through their leases. Mm -hmm. And the whole or part of the position of it is really making sure that the retailers are promoted, that ultimately it's driving traffic and sales. The other part of it would be if I'm a retailer and I'm not being promoted, but my competitors are, Mm -hmm. then objectively speaking, I'm literally paying my shopping centers and they're using my hardworking dollars to promote my competitors and drive traffic and sales away from me, which doesn't make any sense to a retailer. Right. And then ultimately to what we talked about, alleviating the pressure of the store manager to do it, to make sure that it's consistent and current and correct and compliant because we reach, we realize the retailers' brand and campaigns mm-hmm. are obviously very critical and important to their customer experience and the customer journey. Yeah, well, that's great. So primary user would be the marketing team, like the ones that are creating the campaigns and managing the campaigns? Yeah, so ultimately it would be the retailer's marketing team or specifically a retail marketing team or even an omni-channel team would be the okay. ones. But we find there's obviously an interest with the store ops teams, the finance teams, the innovation teams, because okay. they all play a role in everybody wants to drive more traffic and sales. And right. we can also support to this point, it's really up to the customer where they shop. So mm-hmm. if they're going and let's say they've downloaded the Mall of America app and they say, oh, I don't have time to go shop at Retailer X, but I'm going to go shop online. It can obviously help drive traffic and sales to their e-commerce stores as well. But the focal point would really be helping the retailers drive both in-store and online traffic. Okay, got it. And is there a metrics or analytics play involved here? Because like I said earlier, the goal is to see impact and see a return. So is it possible for marketers to see, okay, like we capitalized on this opportunity, we saw it, capitalized it, and like here's the level of improvement or lift that we've seen as a result of having access to all this information? Yeah. So in the simplest form, what the retailers will do to this point of the customer experience, so I'm Levi's, I've got my marketing campaign going, I've got the posters in the store window, I've got it promoted online. I've got to promote it through my email campaigns or social media. Mm -hmm. So it's that consistent customer experience. So whatever the shopping centers are echoing what that campaign is that's going on in the store window at their property. And ultimately, the data and the tracking, the ROI goes back to however the retailer is tracking the success of that campaign today. Yeah. So it's tapping into whatever measurement and tracking capabilities they have today. So they're not having to create any new content or do anything different than what they're already doing. It's just maximizing the exposure of that campaign that they've got already okay. created and paid for and put in the store window. Okay, got it. So I'm curious, this is probably a more high level question, mainly because we're seeing malls try to elevate the experience largely digitally, right? They're trying to implement, like you said, mobile apps. They're trying to partner with entities like, like a Klarna, for instance, that has a more universal reach and value, but the goal is to get people to interact through the shopping mall. I even have seen like, AR capabilities, like through digital signage, like there's so many possibilities now. So where do you think this ecosystem is heading? And what are you hearing from, I guess, retailers, like in terms of like how they're thinking about marketing through the shopping mall and trying to drive traffic? Because obviously there is excitement around going back to stores, but there's so much, there's definitely there's definitely a shift in like the loyalty scenario. So like, what are you hearing boots on the ground right now? Yeah, so I think from our perspective, the retailers obviously want to drive more traffic and sales. The shopping centers and landlords want to drive more traffic and sales, so they're all in line. I think where the challenge has been, if you look at a lot of technology that's been done over the years in the shopping centers, it's all predicated on retailer engagement, Mm -hmm. right? So if you can't get retailer engagement and you've got a shiny widget that's in the shopping center to do something, it basically dies a slow death because if you've only got five retailers out of 300 engaging in whatever that opportunity is, it's not appealing. So I think really it all comes down to how do you make it easy for the retailers to get engaged with these different opportunities And that's, to this point, really where we come in with a lot of the retailers to make it easy for them to start doing the 
basic fundamentals that should be nailed down in most cases, but again, are just slipping through the cracks. Yeah, very interesting. So what would you recommend to the folks listening right now that are hearing this and maybe are like, oh, <laughs> second guessing what they're doing and whether they're letting that gym membership, so to speak, go to waste? Like, how do they get started? Like, is it an audit or assessment process? Like, where do they even get started with this? Uh, Yeah, great question. So, I mean, they can reach out to me. My email is sean at engagementagents.com or visit our website, Engagement Agents. We do provide a complimentary audit or assessment on the retailers. There's no cost expectations. And what we find in probably 99 out of 100 cases is the retailer's don't know what they don't know. So they may feel like somebody somewhere or the store manager doing it. But again, as an example, the store managers have a bunch of other things to do and they've got to focus on the customer traffic and the customer sales coming in. So I think there's just a real, the retailers don't know what they don't know. And that's kind of where we found bringing awareness to this problem and appreciate your support of what we're doing and having us on is really helping drive more awareness and getting more retailers engaged and again, ultimately helping them do more business. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure the developers probably appreciate this too, because it's a bit tumultuous now, I think, between the developers and the retailers. Retailers are trying to figure out their optimal store footprint. They're rethinking the malls that they're in. So I'm sure any measure that the developers can take to improve that relationship and build that trust is beneficial ultimately, right? Yeah, 100%. So we do work with the shopping centers. They're sort of pseudo customers, if you will. Okay. Because the way our tech works is we communicate out the content to the shopping centers from the retailer. So it's still maintaining, to your point, and building that relationship and rapport. Yeah. So we're not replacing the person at the retailer. We're complementing it. But yeah, you're right. Like the shopping centers, if you go talk to them, they'll say, hey, we try to get our retailers engaged. We want them engaged. We've got all these great opportunities, but it's pulling teeth to try to get them involved. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that challenge has been historically the shopping centers in most cases have the relationship with the store manager. But to this point, store manager's busy. And again, I've experienced this myself when I was with the retail chain. Store manager gets the memo about whatever's coming up. I find out about it today, but Mm. whatever the opportunity was, is either happened today, yesterday, or it's happening tomorrow, and it's too late for me to make any decisions about the opportunity. Right. So I think, again, part of the challenge is this fragmentation, which is really the bigger... That's the big thing. Yeah, if you peel back the onion, I mean, that's really what we're tackling is the lack of industry standardization and the fragmentation. So interesting. Honestly, I've been covering marketing for a long time. Like, I think I'm pretty in the know, but this is one area I think has been completely untapped in our world, at least. So thank you for bringing it to light. Yeah, no, we really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And to all of you, if you have any follow-up questions, which you very likely will for Sean, we'll be sure to tag him in our socials just so we can keep the conversation going, can ask any questions, and of course, get you on a path to optimizing those investments. So we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line on Twitter at our touch points or on LinkedIn at Retail Touch Points, and leave us a review on your preferred podcast player. We're on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and frankly, anywhere else. But that's it from us for now, everyone. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Retail Remix. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find us on your favorite podcast player. Until next time, keep mixing it up.